Okay, so in this here video, I'm just going to go over quickly um, in regards to how to create and apply materials inside 3ds Max. Uh, for this, I'm just going to make a simple box. I'm not going to use any fancy model or anything like that. Um, when you create your box, um, I suppose it already has a, a standard uh, shader or material on it uh, because we can see our polygons in the left or the right hand side. We can choose the color of that. But that's basically all we can do, really, um, with this standard material. If we press M, though, um, we can go into our Slate Material Editor. Um, we can also change to like a compact one. So if you find something like this here, uh, basically what I'm working with, instead of the compact, I'm working with the Slate. Um, we do have on the left-hand side a choice of materials. So they kind of broken down into standard materials and then mental ray materials. So if you have mental ray installed, you'll have these materials here as well. Uh, these won't really show in your preview window uh, because they're mental ray. They'll have to be rendered out uh, using the mental ray uh, rendering engine. Uh, but these standard ones, you can get a better preview of them in your viewport. I'm just going to use our standard one here today. So I'm just going to drag and drop that into our scene. As you can see, we've got a lot of nodes on the left-hand side. Uh, these can be basically used for uh, different textures. Uh, so you've got our diffuse textures, specular color, specular level. You can have an opacity in there, bump, reflection, refraction, displacement. Uh, these are kind of what you would find commonly in um, Unreal 4 or Unity. Uh, they might be named slightly different, though. Um, you can double-click on this sphere here to make it bigger. Uh, this will give you a better preview of what your texture is going to look like. If I double click on my actual tag or my material, uh, on the right hand side I get basically a list of attributes that I can uh, change along with this. So as a default it's going to be set up to blend, um, which is kind of like a shiny metal type material. Uh, it doesn't have any specular levels here at the minute so um, it's kind of more of a like a Lambert, like a matte material, I suppose, when it starts off with. Uh, you can change the color of your material by going into Diffuse. You can change the color of the specular when we suppose when we add that in the specular. Uh, you can change if it has self-illumination if you want. Um, but I'll not be using that. And that also you can change the opacity in here. So you can see it's kind of disappear. Um, you'll notice that we have boxes beside some of these attributes as well. Um, these are basically uh, that we can attach maps. To them. So you can do it here. You can click on and attach a map. Or you can go down to maps and click on like diffuse and attach a map that way. Or you can drag out a node here and attach uh, like a standard map if you wanted to. If we want to attach this material to our object, basically what we have is have to do is have our material selected, so make sure that's double clicked. Have our object selected and then apply or assign material to a selection. And you can see that changes. So now if I change the color of this, the color of my model will change. If I change the opacity, you can see it will slightly fade away. <coughs> To apply a texture to this um, is relatively simple. I'm just going to go to textures.com to start off with. And this is a very good website to get some uh, of your free textures from. Uh, you have to sign up. Uh, it is free. Um, you can't download unlimited amount of textures uh, on this website. But you can download maybe 15 to 20 a day which is more than enough to play around with. So in here, uh, I'm basically maybe just going to get a brick. So I'll go into the brick section. Uh, I'll just go for red brick and I'll just go for this brown. Uh, another thing in here, you'll see that some of these are seamless, so that means that they're tileable. Um, for today's lesson, I am going to just use a tileable one. Uh, but uh, in other lessons as well, I'll put videos up on how to create your own tileable or seamless texture uh, from a non-seamless image. So I'm just going to click on this here, and then I'm just going to download 
this small version. That's another thing, if you're not a premium member, you can usually only download uh, these smaller versions. And I'm just going to drag this out to my desktop. So, in 3ds Max now, um, I want to attach that to my diffuse color. So diffuse color is sometimes uh, just your color texture, or it's also known as your dirt map. It should be a texture that has no kind of other attributes other than the color of that texture. So no kind of like shadow work, no like uh, specular or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just going to drag this out, go into standard, and it's under bitmap where we get our uh, textures. So I've saved this to desktop. Just grab my brick and open that up. And you can see in my preview window that my material has changed, but in my standard window here, it hasn't. What we have to make sure is if we click on realistic under materials, we want to make sure that we have realistic materials with maps. As default, it might be turned on without maps. And then we can see here our texture is now applied. To our model. Um, I can double click on this here uh, texture and again I'll have attributes for that now on the right hand side. So I can turn the or change the coordinates for this um, or I can tile it, I can blur it, I've got all our options as well where if I've resaved it and made some changes in Photoshop I can reload it, I can um, crop it. There's a load of different um, options in there. The one that we mainly be using though is if you're going to like rotate it or change the angle of the UVs or something like that there. For this here I'll show you about tiling. So if I wanted to tile this and I thought oh maybe the brick is too big or too small in my scene, I can come over to the tiling and I can say uh, I want this to repeat uh, say five times in the U and five times in the V. And you can see now that instead of displaying that image once, it's actually displaying it five times and repeating it over. I just double click on my standard material again. So I can come in here and I can add in some specular highlights now. So you can see when I'm going through this, it doesn't really have any shine to it and brick really shouldn't. But if I turn up my specular level, make sure that it's white. You can see now when I'm going rotating around, when it's out catching the light, it's kind of making it look a bit reflective, like that light's bouncing off it. And then I can turn this glossiness on or off, so I can make it more specific. And I can also soften it as well. Um, I can also tie a specular map to that. So if I wanted to, I could go in and click specular level and I could uh, get a black and white image, uh, which I'll show you in later lessons how to create a specular map. Um, and if I wanted to, I could go in here to opacity and also add another map into that. So that's kind of like the basics of your material editor and applying a material to a model in 3ds Max. Um, this here in conjunction with unwrapping a UVW should allow you to at least uh, unwrap your model uh, and then if you create a material or a texture from that UVW template, apply it to your model inside 3ds Max.